My name is Dave Thomas and I'm a product and support scientist at Thermo Fisher Scientific. So as you know, cleaning validation is a basic process that uh, is, uh, is done every day in the pharmaceutical industry. And just to take a step back and describe what people are doing, typically you're formulating a drug product. You're doing that on a, in a manufacturing suite that's not dedicated just only to that uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient. So the product is formulated, it's filled, dispensed, and then you have to clean up that equipment in time to use uh, for the next active pharmaceutical ingredient. Um, it's very inefficient and expensive. These suites uh, are, they, uh, to, to go through this process takes a lot of money. Um, they don't want to have a long lag time before they convert over to the next product. So the pharmaceutical industry has to be very careful to make sure that all of that active, pharmace active pharmaceutical ingredient is completely uh, flushed out of the system as well as whatever cleaning agents are used to clean it up. Um, then they can dedicate that to the next uh, drug that they're going to formulate. So typically the drug company is going to have a, an analytical method for the API, um, but they don't necessarily have an active, I mean, they don't necessarily have a, a method for the, either the cleaning uh, products themselves or any degradation products that may be left over in that tank. Um, so the, the great thing about a charged aerosol detector combined with HPLC is that they can take swabs or washings from that equipment at different stages during the cleaning process, measure with a detector that really can see every non-volatile analyte that might remain behind and get quantitative or semi-quantitative information to ensure that they've cleaned that up below the threshold that's required for the next step. So typically what's done is uh, after the tank has been cleaned up in preparation for the next run of ap uh, API, the, uh, a swab is taken from the tank and submitted to the laboratory. Now there are several different approaches that could be taken at that point. One typical approach would be just to do something like total organic carbon or perhaps uh, an assay for metal residues. Those are sensitive, but they're not at all specific. You don't really know what's there. And so it's not, it's a very limited use in terms of telling you what remains behind. Uh, with an HPLC analysis followed by charged aerosol detection, you would take those swabs, you would extract that typically into a water solution and inject it onto the HPLC. You would then get a chromatogram showing each individual peak uh, the, representing whatever is left in that tank and the peak height would be uh, in proportion to or the peak area would be in proportion to the concentration of whatever that residue is. There's, there are two ways in which we can use the charged aerosol detector. So uh, typically after we've worked out some kind of a separation method uh, we want to speed things up and the way we would do that is by actually first running a fast screening by using flow injection analysis. Uh, and actually the setup that's described in the presentation done at PitCon shows using a single system with a switching valve. And for the screening mode, the valve is switched so that samples are rapidly injected. And rather than separating the individual components, we just detect them as a single peak and the charged aerosol detector is ideal for that because it's only responding to non-volatile analytes. It's not responding to uh, any of the mobile phase components. And so the peak area that we see in the, in the, rather in the flow injection analysis is really proportional to any residue that remains. So typically what people will do is they'll first set a threshold for peak area based on flow injection analysis. That way they can screen a lot of samples, look for any that show above the threshold. Uh, any, any samples above the threshold could then be very simply with the switch of the valve uh, diverted to the separation column where you could separate and actually detect and quantify individually in a, in, uh, any of the components that are remaining behind. The charged aerosol detector, because it responds uniformly to all non-volatile an analytes, that threshold really is a good semi-quantitative measure of what's in there. Uh, you can use one compound and, and really calibrate and establish your threshold based on that. And any residues that you find in the tank 
are going to respond uniformly. So it's really a good, uh, fairly quantitative way of setting a threshold. So what do you do once you've analyzed a sample and found that it uh, shows above the threshold that you've established for residue remaining in the tank? At that point, you would just switch a valve on the uh, HPLC system, run the sample again, but this time sending it through the separation column, and you'd uh, obtain a chromatogram with each individual residue showing up as a peak area uh, and you'd be able to quantify how much of each residue is actually there and identify it if you've previously run standards for that compound. Because the corona is a universal detector that responds uniformly to all non-volatile analytes, we're able to, if, if, we can, if we can separate all of the components from the residue in the tank, we're going to be able to see those, detect them, and measure them. So uh, by using a specialty column, which is the Thermo Fisher Scientific Acclaim P1 column, a mixed mode column that uh, can separate anions, cations, uh, polar and nonpolar analytes in a single run, we're really able to take everything that's uh, remaining as a residue in the, in the, uh, the formulation tank, separate it, identify and quantify anything there. So that would include uh, anions and cations such as sodium or ammonium, uh, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients such as naproxen sodium or acetaminophen, degradation products from those which are going to now respond uniformly with the parent compound even if they don't show the same chromophore, uh, surfactants such as PEG 400 or sodium dodecyl sulfate, all of these things, many of which are not detectable by a simple UV detector, are going to be separated on the uh, uh, Trinity P1 column and detected by the charged aerosol detector. For the cleaning validation analysis, we used an Ultimate 3000 RSLC system, and we, uh, we used a dual gradient version of this that was plumbed with the Viper capillary kit for inverse gradient. And what this is, is just a simple approach to make sure that we obtain the most uniform response from the charged aerosol detector for all non-volatile analytes. We also had switching, uh, switching valves installed that allowed us to switch between the flow injection analysis, which was the screening uh, according to the threshold that we established, as well as uh, for samples that exceeded the threshold, we could just throw the switching valve uh, re-inject the sample, do a full separation uh, and identification and quantification of the uh, analyte in the residue. The cleaning validation analysis is run under Cremillion 7.1 software. That's a CDS uh, package that automates and simplifies the whole process and allows it to run unattended.